Within this tutorial, we're gonna go through another 10 tips that can be very helpful when you're teaching Unreal Engine inside of the classroom. For a full list, go ahead and take a look down in the description. But without further ado, let's jump right in. When it comes to building worlds inside of the Unreal Engine, sometimes it's helpful to have like a top view or a side view or a bottom view. And this can actually be achieved by default by clicking this little button up here in the top right of our viewport. If we can click on this, you can see I get four different views. Now each one of these actually has a specific name associated with it. This one's our top, our right, and our back. We can of course change these by clicking on these and go ahead and choose a different one. We can also change the layout of each of these as well. Instead of having four, maybe I wanna have three. So if I come up here to the top left-hand corner, I'm gonna just click on this and if I come all the way down where it says layouts, you can see I can choose a couple of different ones. This becomes really helpful if we want to have a specific camera inside of one of these viewports. Now to add a little pro tip to this, we don't even have to hit those buttons. If you actually hold down the control key and middle mouse click and drag, you can actually pull out this little tiny wire and I'm gonna pull it off to the right here. You can see it says, hey, I should go to the right. Or if I middle mouse click and drag to the left, it'll actually go to the left when I let go of it instead of having to click on it. Now, here's something that's cool about these orthographic views is that you can middle mouse click and drag by itself and you can actually get a ruler. So if you need to check a distance for something, you can go ahead and make that happen. And these units are in Unreal Units, which are centimeters. When it comes to selecting multiple objects inside of Unreal, it can be very handy to be able to just hold down Control and Alt, left mouse click and drag, and actually create a little box. Now what's gonna happen, you'll notice, is that I'm getting things like this, even though it wasn't fully inside of that box, and that's not what I want. So we can change these settings by going up into our settings up here in the top right-hand corner of the UI. And in here, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle on this strict boxed selection. So with this on, let's go ahead and unselect everything. If I hold down Control and Alt, if I click and drag this out, I'm only gonna get those two little blue boxes. And that's very helpful. Now, the other thing is that this is based on the view. And if you can't see something, for example, this box back here in the back, it's not actually gonna let you grab it unless, let's go ahead and turn the camera this way. We come up here to our settings and we turn on this box select occluded objects. So now if I turn that on and I come over here and do a box selection right about here-ish, and this one was selected even though I couldn't see it in the viewport. Changing between global and local space when you're trying to move, scale, and rotate an object becomes very, very helpful, especially for putting a roof on top of an object. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and adjust this roof, I can just kind of move it once or twice, or in this case, I can actually just grab this section of the gizmo. However, if I come up here and go ahead and toggle this little button, it's got a little globe in it, I can turn this into a local, and you'll notice that the gizmo is now actually turned. So now I can actually just kind of move this over. So if I were to go ahead and uh, duplicate this and bring it over here. Now I can go ahead and set each one of these real easily so that the top of my roof will actually line up the way I want it to. We can actually change the layout of the UI, but did you know that you can actually dock tabs as well? So for this example, let's go up into Windows and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Place Actors. And you notice this going to pops on the left. And of course I can bring this out and I can dock it to the top and the right and such. But did you know that you can right click on this and go ahead and go to dock on sidebar and what's handy about this is I can go and just open it up and maybe grab something out of this and it'll actually close when I'm done with it. Now you of course can leave these open by clicking this little tiny button right here that says pin tab. And now it'll always stay open and it'll never close even though I start grabbing in multiple pieces. And then of course I can close it again by go ahead and click on that and go ahead and just click somewhere inside of the canvas. Parenting objects together can be really helpful when you wanna move one object and have something go along for the ride, or you want to scale them together. But it may be kind of difficult to parent them together if you're using something like the Outliner. Of course, I can just click and drag one of these on top of the other one, but if they're really far apart, this is kind of tricky. So to get around this, if I right click on this object, come to Attach To, and then I come over here to my little eyedropper, I go ahead and just click on this cube. So now when I go ahead and move the cube, that cone will go ahead and move along with it. When doing a demo inside of the Unreal Engine, sometimes we don't have time or don't want to actually be building the assets. And that's where our starter content comes in handy. And you can actually add this to any project and it's actually very easy to do. And it has a whole bunch of cool stuff inside of it. Blueprints, different kinds of levels, and some particles. So how do we actually get this? All you have to do is go over here into this little add button that you see over here in the left, and then go into add feature or content pack. And from here, go over to this content section right here. Here we have our starter content and go ahead and just say add to project. That will then go ahead and load that information into the project so you don't have to kind of create everything from scratch. 
Did you know there's actually a debug camera that you can get access to while the game is actually playing? So to get a hold of this, let's go ahead and just play the game in here and move somewhere that I want to be. All I'm going to do is hit the semicolon key on my keyboard, and now I kind of have this drone camera that I can move around and kind of check things out. This is really handy if you want to have the game running for a specific amount of time and then go actually look at something. And if I go ahead and hit that button again, it'll just snap back onto my character and I can continue to play as I would expect. Being able to undo is probably one of the most powerful things about working with digital content. But did you know inside of Unreal Engine, you actually can go back multiple undos without having to just keep hitting the undo button. If we go up into the edit up here in the very top left and go ahead and choose our undo history, you get this giant list. And you can actually scroll through this and find a point where you want to go all the way back. So let's go back up to our move elements here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit this button that says jump to transaction. And you can see that this actually will change what's going on inside of my level back to that specific point in history. And I don't have to try and hit undo a ton of times. Did you know that you can actually put in console commands inside of Unreal Engine to get it to do specific things? And it's great for debugging. So you can actually find it down here in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. And all you need to do is actually just type in the tilde key and you'll be able to go ahead and type in here. And if I go ahead and just type in the word help, we can find, hey, we have some help. So let's go ahead and just click on that. And then I'm gonna press enter on the keyboard to go ahead and enter this command. And what'll happen off screen, of course, this goes ahead and pops up and it'll give you a list of all of the console commands that you're gonna need. So let's go ahead and use this real quick just so you can kind of see how this is helpful. So if I type in the word audio, we get a list of all of the audio commands and if there is any information on it, it will actually tell us what this is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this line right here and let's go back into the Unreal Engine. And I do need to go ahead and drop in a couple of pieces of audio so that we can actually hear this. So let's go and drop it an explosion and I'm gonna go ahead and drop in the fire as well. Now, if I hit play, nothing is actually seen on screen, but if I come down to my console command, paste this in, and I'm gonna add a one at the end of it to toggle this on and hit enter, you can actually see there, there's that fire. Now, the one that I put in over here is now gone because it's no longer actually playing. So I can actually see where these things are at and where they're playing from. So these console commands are great because they give us control inside of the engine that isn't just readily available by hitting certain buttons. So there you have another 10 tips that'll help you navigate inside of the Unreal Engine, both in the classroom and inside of your projects. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go and just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you when I can. And don't forget to be clever like and subscribe.